In today's video, we're going to be looking at Splat in the color Midnight Indigo. So this is one of their more pigmented dyes, and that's kind of why I'm more excited to try this out. So in the United States, at least, I know this is a pretty accessible dye. It's kind of found in any drugstore. I feel like I've seen it everywhere, so for your guys' sake, I did want to try it out. But I will say they did send this to me back in October for Halloween. So I don't know if the more pigmented line is sold in stores or not the same way that their regular line is. So what comes in this box is obviously the dye, which is a pretty big bottle. You'll get the directions and inside the directions are some gloves. Kind of like regular box hair dye. I don't know if you can see it in there, but. <laughs> and they also have a deep conditioner, which is interesting because you don't get any bleach in this kit. And this kit is made for both light hair and lighter brown hair, but it's still nice nonetheless. So to start, I have my swatches labeled one through 12, but that is not synonymous with hair levels. I'll be doing close-ups and like pictures at the end of the video, so the numbers just help us keep track of each swatch. These are human hair, but the only one that is virgin hair will be the number four black swatch. The rest have probably been chemically treated, dyed, bleached at some point in their lifetimes. One is pink. I wanted to see if it would be a little bit more purpley looking mixed with the blue, or if the blue would just straight up cover it. Two is gray. Three is a natural red, four is black, and then from four to 11, we have a range that goes to platinum blonde, and then number 12 is like a toned version of number 11. So I'll be taking the dye directly from the container and I'll be putting it at the top of each swatch. And then some people do dilute their dyes, so I'll be trying a diluted version at the bottom of each swatch. Please keep in mind, everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take dye differently. So just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly turn out for you. Also, monitors and screens all make colors look slightly different as well. So on one screen, it could look more cool tone. On another, it could look more warm tone. So I need to just put that out there as well. So this is actually pretty pigmented, so it's gonna sound like a lot, but the diluted section is a 12 to one ratio. So that will be 12 parts of diluter to one part dye. If you're unsure what diluter is, the simple answer is that it lightens the color of the dye, essentially. And if you're wondering what I use, I just use a plain white conditioner. And I have to note with this dye, Originally, I tried mixing it with a slightly thicker conditioner, not a super thick one either, just a little bit more thick, and the consistency turned into paste. It was very interesting. If you've never worked with splat dyes before, they're very, very, very liquidy, so the fact that it, mixing it with that conditioner turned it very pasty was really weird, so I tried mixing it with a more liquidy conditioner that I have that's also white, and it's back to a liquidy consistency. So I'm not really sure if there was an ingredient in the first one that didn't mix well with the dye or if it was just, I don't know, <laughs> just a warning, I guess. So I'm gonna let these swatches sit for about three hours 
I will then rinse them out and when they're dry, I will meet you back here. I'm gonna warn you right now. <laughs> if you decide to use this dye, please be careful of staining. As you can see, I'm sure on some of the swatches, like on the number one swatch, number five, it definitely stained the top there too. So this dye is super pigmented. And oddly enough, even on the number four, I won't say you can see blue necessarily. Like it looks black here and it looks black here, but in certain lights, I can see a difference from the top and the bottom. And actually the top looks even more dark than the bottom somehow. Um, and oddly enough as well, the top part of the number one, which was pink, it has a slightly more purpley blue look versus the other ones. But then the diluted section to me doesn't really look that much different. It still looks more blue. And then personally, I think it looks the best on one, two, and then nine and upwards, but it did pretty much die every swatch. Now I've heard a lot of different things when it comes to fading and this brand. So if you have experience, especially with the more pigmented line, feel free to comment and let people know your experience. I don't wash my swatches because I like to use them in future videos and stuff. So that's not anything I can really help you with. But like I said earlier in the video, because this brand is so much more accessible, at least in the United States, there's probably a lot of people out there who have experiences with these dyes. So feel free to let us all know. Because the number nine swatch dried a little bit more wavy, this person's hair is probably naturally more wavy. It is catching the light a little bit more, but I do think that nine through 12 pretty much all dyed relatively the same on the direct dye swatch. From my angle, it does kind of seem like number 12 dyed a little bit darker looking. And that could be because the swatch before dyeing was more cool toned. Cool tones tend to not reflect light as easily or as well as warmer tones. And then as for the diluted sections, I think one, two, and then 10 through 12 look the best. I do really like how number nine looks, but it starts to pull slightly more greenish because of the yellowy tones in the hair. And I feel like, especially on 11 and 12, that's probably closer to the intentional color. And then as you get darker, it gets more and more green looking. And then on the darker swatches, like the browns, light browns, I feel like it made the hair pretty much look black on the direct dye. And then again, for the diluted section, it's a little bit more green. So I want to say that this is a dye for dark hair, but also if you're looking for blue hair, I don't really know if this will be the one for you. But at the same time, blues for dark hair are probably very hard to find anyways, because naturally I would assume that most blues would want to turn kind of a greenish blue on darker hair. So I guess at that point, it's more of a preference thing. So from here, I do want to get into some comparisons. And we'll start with Lunar Tides in the color Blue Velvet. This is comparable to number 12, number 11, number 10, and number nine. So you can see as Blue Velvet is diluted, it definitely holds more of like a greenishy blue. It's possible that the Midnight Indigo from Splat would maybe turn a slightly more greenish blue as you dilute it as well, just because of the yellow in the hair. I definitely didn't dilute it enough to really see if that can happen. But regardless, I feel like even the direct dye portion for Blue Velvet does look slightly more greenish, but that's not to say that the Blue Velvet is a bluish green necessarily, just that the Midnight Indigo pulls way more cool toned and closer to a purpley blue. The Midnight Indigo also is a very, very dark blue too. Um, the direct dye for Blue Velvet is on the deeper end, but in comparison, the Midnight Indigo is even darker. Actually, I think I'm gonna put a piece of paper down real quick just so the diluted sections are a little bit less distracting and we can just see the direct dye portions. So hopefully you can see what I mean here. Um, the Midnight Indigo compared to the Blue Velvet on the direct dye portion at least, actually almost looks kind of purple. So that's further proof <laughs> that the Midnight Indigo leans much more cool toned. Um, but they're both nice colors. The blue velvet also was a little bit more pigmented and did dye the lighter brown, darker blonde swatches as well. So it's kind of just preference in the type of blue that you like. And while the diluted section is not a perfect representation of how they will fade, I would assume that the blue velvet would be more likely to fade to a greenish blue versus the midnight indigo. The other comparison I wanted to do today is 
Directions dye in the color Midnight. This is comparable to number 12, number 11, number 10, and number 9. I felt like this one was actually a little bit more similar because it doesn't lean quite as warm toned as the blue velvet but comparing them now you can actually see that the midnight from directions is slightly more like a muted blue a little bit more smoky looking when i cover up the diluted sections once again i feel like the splat dye leans slightly more cool toned it does look a little bit more purple even here in comparison the midnight from directions looks just a hair more blue and in terms of depth i would say they're pretty close but i feel like the slightly more purpley tone in the splat dye does make it look closer to like a black um i will be doing close-ups fairly soon so i guess we'll see because that will be in natural lighting we'll see just how dark it looks in natural lighting and then the diluted section again you can see the directions color is a little bit more muted the splat actually looks very like jewel tone sapphire -y. it's actually very very pretty um again the directions dye did a pretty good job dyeing the lighter brown darker blonde swatches as well but I feel like the diluted sections for the Directions dye didn't dye quite as well as the Splat did. The Direct dye portion did though. So once again, it's preference. Directions Midnight leans a little bit more smoky. I feel like the diluted section actually looks kind of closer to like a denim blue, whereas the Splat, when it's diluted, looks a little bit closer to a jewel tone blue. But I personally like both of them quite a bit. So I know there are other blues that exist that are probably a little bit closer to the splat dye. So in the future, when I do do those blues, of course, I will compare this to those. So just stay tuned. You can always make a request as well. <laughs> but now I want to get into the before and after clips. Those will be filmed in natural lighting, but I'm sure, as you know, recreating the exact same environment with natural lighting on two different days is a little bit difficult sometimes. So if anything looks slightly off, that's probably why.
I hope this video helped. If you have a request, I do a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do dyes that do not test on animals. I also have my dye schedule linked below. That might change periodically. Nothing's ever set in stone unless it's like the next few weeks usually. But if you're curious what's on my schedule, that will be there too. Thank you so much to my patrons and thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.